heard a lot about bipartisan bickering over job creation, right, haven't we? Uh, not a lot of action, though, when it comes to bipartisanship. Our next guest is hoping to change that. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio is here. He's just unveiled a jobs plan called the Agree Act, along with Democrat Chris Coons. So, Senator, you say this could move the needle, not only economically, but, but politically as well. Why is that? Well, first of all, there are major issues of disagreement, and those are what we're going to have an election about those, what the proper role of government is, how to reform our tax code. There are, there are plenty of things to fight about between Republicans and Democrats. But what we've noticed is that there are a bunch of things we agree on. There are things that are in the president's jobs plan that are also in the Republican jobs plan. And our theory was, well, why don't we pass those things? Why don't we agree on the things we agree on and then leave the other things for the election? What, what we can't do is sit around here for 12 months and do nothing uh, because people are really hurting and, and job creation needs to be number one on the agenda. Uh, you mentioned tax reform in, in your answer there, and that's been a, something very serious as a point of discussion when it comes to the super committee. And again, so many different reports coming out of what's actually happening behind closed doors. But we do understand that there is some concern about tax revenue raising, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, do you support revenue raising as part of an agreement in the super committee? Will you support that? only if it's part of economic growth. I, I, I think our government does need more revenue in order to pay down its debt. I think the difference of opinion is where do you get the revenue from? And I don't think you get the revenue from higher tax rates. I think you get the revenue from growing your economy. As I've said over and over, over again, what we need are new taxpayers, not new taxes. And I think if we simplified the tax code, if we lowered the rates in the tax code and made them permanent, all those $2 trillion are sitting out there in bank accounts. That stuff would flood into the market. Jobs would be created. New businesses would start up. People would get hired. When people start working, they start paying taxes, and collections would go up. So that's really what we should be focusing on. And I think that this idea about raising taxes, not only is it a bad idea, it won't work. It won't get us out of the but hole. But maybe closing in. tax loopholes? It sounds like you might be open to well, that. Well, yeah, and then use the money to lower the rate. In essence, using the money from a loophole, if it's a real loophole, to lower the rate and simplify the tax code, but not to grow government. It'll be interesting to see, and we don't know. Again, we should know within a few days what the proposal might eventually look like. There's been a lot of different coalitions that have popped up. The Go Big Coalition, for example, is trying to encourage the Super Committee to make $4 trillion worth of cuts. Uh, you have the Tea Party activists on the Hill today talking about $9 trillion worth of cuts. Uh, you haven't signed up for the, the Go Big Coalition. Will you do that? Well, I, I want us to do as much as we can. My problem is I don't think the Super Committee was a good idea. And I'm not going to get excited about a super committee that's deliberating in, 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 in private. We have no idea what the, you know, we have to rely on media leaks to have any insight into what's happening. And these are significant decisions. These are some of the most important policy decisions that will ever be made in this building. And we have no idea what they are because of the super committee. You know, every member of Congress gets paid every two weeks to come up here and do their job. And this was nothing but an effort, in my opinion, with all due respect, to try to kick the can down the road and, and leave it on someone else to decide. What, what we need to do here is figure out a way to get our economy growing again and hold the line on spending. And I don't think we need a super committee to do that. Well, because you disagree with the super committee, the, the procedure in all of this, what will happen if they do not come up with an agreement and you have those automatic yeah. cuts going into place? Will you try to block those cuts from happening? Yeah, they're catastrophic. They're a bad idea. I mean, it all comes out of defense for the most part. It would eviscerate our national defense capabilities. Just a moment ago, you had Ambassador Bolton on talking about the risk to China post. In, in the Pacific. Uh, are we going to be able to fund that? Are we going to be able to keep pace with the military spending of China, keep pace with the military risk that Iran poses in the Middle East and now even in our own hemisphere? I mean, those are the real challenges of the 21st century. And what we need is a vibrant, growing economy that can afford to fund our national defense, which is one of the things that the federal government should be doing. Real quick, I only have about 30 seconds here. You obviously are seeing some light as far as bipartisanship reaching across the aisle to, to work with uh, uh, Senator Coons. How do you bring that into the other areas of government, like what we're seeing with the Super Committee? How does that serve as a model? Well, I think if we can get that passed and we can get some activity on that and some progress on that, people will say, hey, that didn't hurt too much. What else can we work on? Look, we're, there are a lot of things we're not going to agree on, and that's what we're going to talk about over the next 12 months, and that's what the American people are going to decide in November in an election. But on the things we do agree on, we should do them, because there are people at home that are really, really hurting. You're coming up on your first year anniversary of your first year as an elected official. We'd love to talk to you about that when the anniversary crosses. It's been quite a year, Senator. A nice to have you on the program. Uh, we look forward to having you back, sir. Thank you, Jenna. And we'll be right back with more happening now.